Hey, this is Mr. Bell, Mr. Bell's Math. Uh, today we're talking about generating equivalent expressions. <coughs> Sorry, still got that cold one y'all gave me. Our essential question, or what I want you to know at the end of this video, is how can you identify and write equivalent expressions? Okay, so I'm going to show you several different ways. One way you can test whether two expressions are equal is to evaluate them. And evaluate means to solve, okay? Get an answer. Solve them for the same value of the variable. All right, and what I mean by this, let me go ahead and get a pencil here so we can start talking about it. Let's look at this list here. I got 5x plus 65. I want to find out if one of these three expressions is equal to that. So I pick a number, just a random number, and I substitute it for the x. Let's just go ahead and say x equals 2. I don't want to make it a big number. I don't want to make it real complicated. I don't need, it doesn't need to be a decimal or a fraction. Just something simple, okay? So if I substitute 2 for x, and I say 5 times 2 is 10, plus 65 equals 75. So that's how much that is equal to when x equals 2. So I want to find one of these expressions over here that is also equal to 75. Okay, so I just go through the list. All right, I say 5x plus 1. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11. Well, guess what? that's not equal to 75. Let's look at this one. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 5. 15, that's not equal. So it might be this one here. So I say 13 plus 2 is 15. 15 times 5 is, guess what? 75. So I have me a match. These two expressions are equivalent. Okay, let's look at the next one. Let's go ahead and just still, let's change it. Let's just say x equals 3 on this one okay you don't have to you can use two every single time if you want to all right I'm just showing you how it works so I say 3 plus 1 is 4 times 5 is 20 so if one of these remaining two equals 20 then I'll be in good shape so I say 5 times 3 is 15 plus 1 is 16 it's not that one 5 times 3 is 15 plus 5 is 20 guess what I have a match boys and girls these two our matches. So the last one, let's just, let's, I'll tell you what, let's just get crazy. Let's just go nuts with this one and say x equals 5. Just, just, it's okay. 5 times 5 is 25, plus 1 is 26. So when x equals 5, this expression equals 26. So if this last one here equals 26, then I got my match. So 5 times 5 is 25, plus 1 is 26. Guess what? That's my match. <coughs> and that's all there is to it. Not much more. Sorry for drinking, but i got to keep my throat smooth. All right. Modeling equivalent expressions. Now, another way you can do this is use a model. All right. It says you can use models to determine if two expressions are equivalent. Algebra tiles are one way to model the expression. So this is what I'm talking about when I say algebra tiles. I got this little guy here, he's going to equal 1. And I got this big rectangular guy here, he equals x. Okay, and how I would do this on a problem is I would just draw an x, and I would probably put a 1 in there, or not an x, but draw a square rather. And then I would draw a rectangle and put an x in there. Okay, so let's look at an example. It says model each expression using algebra tiles. So in this particular model, I have 3 times x plus 2 and I have 3x plus 6. And I want to know if those two expressions are equivalent. So we're going to model using the tiles. Let me grab this thing and bring it down. Okay, so what I've done is I've modeled 3x plus 2s. So here's x and here's 2. So I got 1, 2, 3 of those. Okay, that just that goes exactly with what the problem says. Then I modeled 3x plus 6 over here and I got 3x's right three X's and I got six ones so then what I want to do is say alright the model for three times X plus two has how many X tiles well it has one two three X tiles and it has six one two three four five six one tiles and then I go down here and do the same thing the model for three X plus six has three X tiles and it has six one tiles. So guess what, boys and girls? 
the expression 3x, uh, 3 times x plus 2 is equivalent to 3 to x plus 6. And it says explain. Well, we just did with this problem. Woo, just threw it out of there. With this problem here, by saying that each one has the same number of x tiles as they do um, each other. And then you have then the same number of 1 tiles as well. All right. <coughs> so this is really important. And I'm going to highlight this. So maybe you all will remember that it's important. And I'm going to star it. I'm going to star it. I'm going to star it. Okay. It's important. It's important. I'm going to say this again. It's important. Some of y'all may already even know this. Okay. But there's, there's a couple things we need to talk about. The community, these are properties of addition and multiplication. And these properties help you determine whether or not expressions are equivalent. And later on, they'll help you solve problems as well. So the commutative property of addition. So and there's a commutative property of multiplication. They're basically the same, except one affects multiplication and the other affects division. I mean, not division, but addition. So commutative is the key word. Commutative means to commute, to move, to, to go back and forth. All right, so it says when adding or when multiplying, changing the order of the numbers does not change the sum. Okay, so we got 3 plus 4. I'm going to get 7. If I add 4 plus 3, guess what? I'm still going to get 7. So in an addition problem, you can change the order and you won't affect the answer. Multiplication will. Don't think this works on multiplication because it doesn't. It's only for addition and only for multiplication. I can say 2 times 4 and get the same answer as 4 times 2. <coughs> All right. Then we have an associative property of multiplication and division as well. Now, associative is the key word. That means who you associate with, who, who you hang around. Okay. I can rearrange you guys in a group, but guess what? You're the same class. Okay. So that's the same kind of idea here is that I have three plus four in parentheses plus five, and I can add three plus four and get seven and then add five and get 12. Well, guess what? If I add three plus four plus five here, I add 4 plus 5 and get 9, add 3 and I'll get 12. I get the same answer. Same thing for multiplication. I say 2 times 4 is 8, times 3 is 12, and no, I'm sorry, 2 times 4 is 8, times 3 is 24, and then I have 4 times 3 is 12, times 2 is 24. So I get the same answer. I'm still following my rules, my order of operation by doing what's in parentheses first, but it doesn't matter because I'm still going to get the same answer. Okay, then you have the distributive property. Now this is a little tricky. But it says multiplying a number by a sum or difference is the same as multiplying each number in the sum or difference and then doing your adding and subtracting. Okay, so this is your example. I have 6 times 2 plus 4. And that's the same thing as taking the 6, multiplying it times 2, and then adding it to the 6 times 4. Okay, 6 times 2 plus 6 times 4. Or I can do, now this one I can do with subtraction. All right, I can say... Um, I can do 2 plus 4, well, let me go back up here, I can say 2 plus 4 is 8, times 6 is 48, or I can say 6 times 2 is 12, 6 times 4 is 24, 24 plus 12 is 48, okay? So that works. Then I have 5 plus 5 minus 3, I got 2, then I can say 8 times 2 is 16, here I can say 8 times 5 is 40, 8 times 3 is 24, I subtract, I get 16, okay? You're just, you're distributing this 8 to each term inside the parentheses. Then you have the identity properties of both addition and multiplication. The identity property just says you can <coughs> add a, number, a zero to a number and it doesn't change the value of the number, or you can multiply a number by one and it doesn't change the value of the number. Okay. All right. So we're going to use these properties to solve a couple equations here. They're not, but not solve them, but determine whether or not they're equivalent. So here we have three times x minus two and we have 3x minus 6. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is use the distributive property and say that, oops, we're using the distributive property. I've got to have a pin here. I'm going to multiply 3 times x, and I'm going to multiply 3 times 2. So what we wind up with is 3 times x minus 3 times 2. And then we just go ahead and say, all right, 3x e minus six which is the same as this one so three uh, times x minus two and three x minus six are equivalent okay based on that feature there all right let's see if we can uh, get rid of this i just got rid of the whole thing didn't want to but i did so the same thing happens on this next problem <coughs> so i have um 
2 plus x. I'm not sorry. Yeah, 2 plus x. 2 plus x. And then I have 1 half times 4 plus x. All right, so on the this one here, i got to use the distributive property to go ahead and combine these terms. So I say 1 half times x plus 1 half times 4. All right, so what I wind up with is 1 half x plus 2. All right. And then I used, it says I used the commutative property to kind of turn it around and make it look like this problem here. I put my, my constant first, and then I put my variable with the exponent next. Now, this one doesn't have a number in front of the exponent. It doesn't matter what the number is. It doesn't have one. So that means it's not equal. Okay, so 2 plus x does not equal 2 plus 1 half x. They're, just, they're not equivalent expressions. All right. So next thing I want to talk about is um, parts of an algebraic expression because this is kind of important too because we're going to start talking a lot about terms, coefficients, like terms, and that's going to really move into what you're going to do in the 7th and 8th grade and beyond actually. So the terms, all right, are the parts of the expressions that are separated by addition or subtraction signs. Okay, so 12 plus 3y squared plus 4x plus 2y squared plus 4. 12 is a term, 3y squared is a term, 4x is a term, 2y squared is a term, and 4 is a term. Okay, coefficients are the numbers that are multiplied by at least one variable. Okay, so 12 would not fit that description. 12 is a constant, but 3y squared, 3 is a um, coefficient. 4x, 4 is a coefficient. And then 2y squared, 2 is a coefficient, right? But 4 down here on the end is not. It's just a constant, okay? And then like terms are terms that have the same variable raised to the same power, okay? So here I have 3y squared, and I have 2y squared. They have, they're, they're coefficients, but they have the same variable raised to the same power, so they're like terms. Notice the 4x isn't included in that because it's, it's not, well, first of all, it's an x, and these are y's. All right, but it's not raised to a power at all, okay? So it says when an expression contains like terms, you can use properties to combine the like terms and write equivalent expressions, okay? And that's really what we're boiling down to. We're trying to get, like if you have a big, huge expression that you're trying to um, simplify and get it down into a smaller one that you can actually start to try to solve, you can use these, these um, uh, properties that we just talked about and this information here, and you can do that with it. All right, so I want to look at a couple here real quick. I know I'm running out of time. So if I had, um, it says combine like terms, if I have 6x squared minus 4x squared, okay, well, if I have 6x squares and I want to take away 4x squares, I mean, it's just as simple as, as subtracting the coefficients here. So 6 minus 4, and the, the textbook says that I can actually use the distributive property to say, okay, I can take out this x squared, and I'm, I'm going to, because I'm going to multiply, remember, we just did it in that last slide, where I have the x squared, and if I multiply it times 6, I'm going to have 6x squared, and if I multiply it times 4, I'm going to have 4x squared, so I can work backwards and take it out, and then I can just do my subtraction, 6 minus 4 is 2, and then 2 times x squared is 2 x squared. <coughs> now, that's the, the math behind it, but I just like to say, all right, if I got 6x squares and I want to take 4 of them away, then I just subtract 4 from 6, I get 2. But it's, it's not just 2, it's 2x two squares, which is what we got here. Okay, let's look at another one real quick. Uh, let's see, do that and do that and do that and do that. All right, one more. Uh, 3a, 3a plus 2 times b plus 5a. All right. Now, we're not looking to answer this. We're just looking to, to simplify it and get it to a simple term. Okay. So, first thing I might want to do is um, go ahead and use the distributive property to distribute the 2 to both of these terms. All right. So, I'll have 3a plus 2 times b is 2b plus 2 times 5a would be 10a. All right, so then I look for my like terms. I have a, an a term here, and I have an a term here, and it's all addition. So I say 3 plus 10 would be 13a plus 2b. And that's it. I don't have any b terms, so I can't combine it with anything else. And that's it. I'm just